Alrighty. Um, this is my very first narr narration, so hopefully I'll get this right. This here is my, uh, my other jersey. I have two of them, as you guys know. I bought these primarily to run um, in my trip in July. This one is a medium, and it compresses the body armor onto my body a lot better. Not that my body armor is loose, I just would rather have it tight. Hurry up and check the front end, dumbass. Alright. Now we've got a little deal going on at work. I usually park on the other side of the shuttle bus uh, waiting area. But we've got this guy that parks in a handicap stall that just decided to start parking there. And he's becoming a pain in the ass to several different bikers. <clears throat> I parked there all winter. As you guys know, I rode all winter. And then all of a sudden he decided to start parking there. And it's a handicap spot. And uh, there's probably... 20 handicap stalls and probably 15 or of them are open when he comes to work. So I'm not going to get into a pissing contest. Okay, so we just went through the entrance lane to get around all the traffic. There's two teams getting off today at the same time. So I'm going to take the scenic route instead of the shortest route. But today we're going to talk about one of the common sense laws when you're at sea. You know, you have rules of the road when you're at sea. Like sailboats always have the right-of-way up against a vessel that has engine power. So, like if you meet an oncoming situation where you're in danger of collision with a sailboat and you have a diesel engine or whatever, you have to maneuver around him because he's at the mercy of the winds. Um, when you're pulling into port, you've got red and green buoys, red right returning. When you're returning from sea, the red buoys should be on your right side. Now as far as a common sense rule goes, there's an item that we called the law of gross tonnage and it applies very well to a motorcycle you can have the right-of-way and yes you're correct that you can cross the street on a green light but if you see somebody coming and it's a car and it doesn't look like he's gonna stop the law of gross tonnage applies he outweighs you. He's going to do more damage to you. So, you go ahead and stop and let him go on by. Suburban Rider says uh, the GoPro back here needs to be moved back further because it makes my back look too big. I don't really like this mount. I can't wait till I get my new bloggy because obviously I'm not going to find the other one. But when it does turn up, which I know it's going to, then I'll have two of them. I'll have a backup. Okay, this is Abbott Drive coming out of the airport. And what you're going to see possibly coming up, there is a... I don't know if it's red or it's orange. It's more orange than red. It's a victory motorcycle. And I looked at the guy's face. He had a half helmet on. And uh, he looked, eh, mid-twenties. Whatever. So I saw him go by, so right now I'm trying to catch up with him. Yeah, I, keep, I keep looking back because i got to make sure the camera's still there. Then I realize I can see it in the mirror. But, anyway, some, somewhere along here I'm going to move my hand down. Hopefully you'll be able to see him. But, 
When we get to this stoplight, I want you to look under my right armpit. You'll see him just barely visible. There. And apparently he thinks I ride a cruiser or I don't know what. There he is. See him right? He's right there to the right. He decides to rev up and take off and like he's racing me and I just kind of bip bip there he goes and he misses a shift <laughs> now at this point I want to reach back and turn the camera around and point the camera right at him and just leave it there but I'm not looking to race but I'm not gonna back off either So, that was it, and after he missed his shift, he stayed behind me the rest of the, the rest of the trip. He even turns up the same street I do to go catch the interstate, and he got on the interstate where I get on, but he stayed way back. I think he embarrassed himself quite a bit. I'll give him a break and say he's got 10 years riding experience. I got over 30. So. I don't miss shifts. Now when I get on the interstate up here, it's another couple blocks. Um, you are going to see the law of gross tonnage applied in the ugliest way possible. And, uh, oh yeah, it applies on the street. Now, he comes up behind me, but he stays behind me. And I've given him plenty of room to pull up next to me. And I don't have my signal on. He doesn't know where I'm going. Unless he's looking at my Iowa license plate and realizes I'm going over the bridge. Now as I start going up the bridge, when I get to the top, I start feeling a lot of wind. Now I wrap this corner real good because I know where everything is in this corner. <clears throat> he doesn't, so he fell way back. Not that he was trying to keep up with me. I think he learned his lesson. Okay, here comes the law of gross tonnage. Yes, sir. You go right on by, buddy. Ah, good practical application skill. I have no desire to get run over by a semi. So anyway, I started feeling the gusty winds, and uh, what I do is put my feet on the back pegs and lay, lay out. And I'm looking over the windscreen, suck in my elbows, a little more aerodynamic. Now the other thing I notice about the GoPro in this position makes me look like I'm riding a ninja or something because the handlebars look very far apart. I mean, very narrow. But actually they're pretty far apart. And I lean back up and now we're getting off. And that's pretty much the end of this video. I'm not sure what the timeline length was. So there you have it, the law of gross tonnage. Use it, apply it, it'll save your life. Have a nice day and thanks for watching. Another week and I'll have a new bloggy, so we'll go from there. Ah, the law grows tonnage again.